Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jason here, Rome Bearded, and we are sitting inside the Overland Camper. I'm about ready to hook the solar panels back up to the battery, so took this out over the winter time just because, well, we're not using the camper and don't need the cold weather hurting the battery at all, but it's starting to get nice out. So, we've got a camping trip coming up next weekend, and we are ready to uh, power this bad boy back up again. So before we tuck this thing away into the corner where it won't see the light of day until probably next winter, then uh, I wanted to show you guys what we've got going on inside this box and uh, kind of talk about how we're powering this thing. So we'll start with talking about what's sitting up on top of the roof up here. So here we've got two 100 watt flexible solar panels from Renogy. Uh, they are just VHB taped down to the roof. And then along the front edge, since it's right by the front edge of the camper, put a bead of silicone across the front edge to help protect that taped edge from any sort of weather and dust and dirt and grime and whatever else that's smashing in front of that flat face of the camper. So that's poured into this little black box right here. So those wires are run down inside here and they come out right here next to the fan. You can't see it here above the insulation, but they are, they do run with the rafters all the way to this side. And then I tied them in with the fan wiring over here on the side and just have them running along this wall here. So that's all running into the Renogy Rover 20 amp MPPT charge controller. I went with the 20 amp instead of the 40 because I knew I wasn't going to be running a ton of power into here. I figured 20 is going to be enough. And if not, I can always upgrade that. It'd be a pretty, pretty easy swap out. Uh, yeah, so then we just have that run down to our box. And inside our box, we have from HQST high quality solar technology is a 100 amp hour lithium ion battery. This is a group 31 battery box, a plastic battery box. So it's a little bit oversized. What I did was trim up a little bit of um, two by four, stuck that in the bottom of this thing. So that keeps the battery from rocking back and forth. And then this little piece of foam that came with the battery and the packaging uh, fit really nicely in the front to keep everything from moving, from shifting around and uh, gave a little bit of space for the wires to, to run in there. So with this uh, open dead space over here, this is the Dometic uh, 12 volt power system, power plug system they have. Um, went ahead and just mounted that in here. What is cool about this little system here is you have your typical DC, your uh, you know your 12 volt plug. So typical cigarette lighter plug, which is nice. And then this bottom one is actually specifically made for the Dometic fridge cord, which is what this is. Oh. So this is the Dometic cord. So this powers our fridge right here. It's tied straight to the battery, which is nice. Uh, what's cool about this is instead of being able to use it as just a plug-in cigarette lighter, you can untwist this and release this and have a two pin in here. Well, that two pin right there plugs into here and screws in. And that way this is not going to wiggle out and while you're bouncing down some washboards road, roads or whatever. Uh, therefore your fridge is going to be always running as long as you got power inside the uh, battery here. Uh, this second port here we use for this cord. This is an eight millimeter plug that works with the black pow Blackfire uh, battery bank that Got this back in 2020, a uh, long time ago, feels like. So that way if we drain this down, we can just plug this in and charge it off the solar and have our, our battery stuff ready to go to charge our phones and cameras and all the uh, whatever else. <laughs> are all 
hooked up and got power running to the system. So uh, everything's looking real good right now. Hookup is really simple. Uh, step one, power battery line. So I've got that fused right here just in case so that can bust if anything else, if anything surges real, real bad. Haven't had it happen yet, which is cool. We've also got the, so we plug in the power, the uh, positive to here, and second we do the negative. And last but not least, we hook the solar panels up to the controller. So we've got first the uh, positive, and then the negative, and that powers everything up. Just like that, we're up and running. So pretty excited to see that happening. The load off of here is these two ports here, and uh, they're actually running the Max Fax, the, the Max Air fan. So we're gonna power that up. We are up and running. Fans running, solar's charging. We're looking good here. That's awesome. Don't need that. We'll close that so we can keep good charge coming through. The last piece of the power station is our Blackfire uh, 300 watt battery system. Uh, it's sitting at 81% charge right now, but it's a super simple battery box to keep our phones, drones, and cameras all up and running. Uh, that power cable I talked about earlier, eight millimeter power cable, runs right into there and uh, gives us power. So it can charge this up while we're on the road and just keep everything up and running. That's charging straight off of the battery, which is pretty sweet. So a couple things that we do run off of there, we also run this uh, port here is our AC for this uh, Maglite flashlight. And just having that here, we first come in, we can crank that on and, and shine some light up on the ceiling and really illuminates the place real nice. So eventually we'll probably add some sort of lighting in here, but we like it simple. So here's our simple solar setup for you. Got any questions? Shoot them down in the comments below. Hope sure to get a hold of you and uh, respond back. So with that, appreciate you all tuning in, and we'll catch you next time right here on Rome Bearded. Everything's up and running and looking mighty fine.